Uh, welcome to uh, AP Biology. This is uh, Unit 2, Topics 4 and 5, Plasma Membrane and Membrane Permeability. It's only about 14 slides. A couple of them are practice that we're going to skip over anyway, so we can do in class. Um, so uh, let's get started. Down over here, you can see a model of a plasma membrane. So you can see the phospholipids down over in here uh, on each side. And you'll notice some other things kind of sticking through. We have some proteins, we have some carbohydrates, we have some globular proteins as well as channel proteins, glycoproteins, right? So there's a lot of stuff that is kind of shoved into this plasma membrane that all sort of affects uh, its permeability. Great, so take a few minutes, review your notes on unit one. Unit one's not going anywhere. Uh, take a look at this phospholipid. Uh, so we have seen this before. Examine the phospholipid, identify the structure. So up here we have A, B, C, and D. There's four parts of this phospholipid we have to pay attention to. Right? A, right up top, that's your phosphate group. We can tell because it's a phosphate in the middle with these oxygens all around it. Uh, this is, again, the same macromolecule that we looked at in unit one. So please review those notes. Uh, B, over here, this is our glycerol. Okay. It's those carboxyl groups. C, we have a hydrophilic head. So this whole thing, this is A and B combined. This is the hydrophilic part. This part loves water. We call it the head because it's nice and round and it's on top of the little feetsies below. And then we have the tails down over here. One of them is a saturated fatty acid. One of them is an unsaturated fatty acid. Remember, I like to think of the difference as saturated is saturated with hydrogen atoms. I cannot fit another hydrogen atom inside there if I tried. This one here, I can break this bond theoretically and shove another hydrogen in there. It's not quite saturated. That's just how I remember it. Please come up with your own way to remember. Answer review questions two to four. We're going to do that in class, so don't worry about that. You can skip over that. Great. So the function of the plasma membrane is to separate internal cell environment from the external environment. It's comprised mostly of these phospholipids, but as we just saw, there's a lot of other uh, sort of factors and proteins and that sort of thing that go into it. So here's your phospholipids. There's the hydrophilic head, hydrophobic tail. These phospholipids are amphiphatic. That's the word that we use to say one side likes water, one side does not like water. So amphiphatic is... Um, both polar and nonpolar, right? They both love water and do not love water. Hydrophilic head, hydrophobic tails. It also means that they form this thing called a bilayer. So if you can imagine this is outside the cell and there's a bunch of water-based things out here and then you have inside the cell down here, right? And inside the cell, the cytosol, it's mostly a fluid environment. So it makes sense that these parts that love water, these hydrophilic heads, will arrange themselves on the outside, right? Whereas the part that doesn't like water are going to kind of hide on the inside here. So this happens uh, spontaneously, and this is called a bilayer. Selective permeability is the ability of membranes to regulate substances that come in and out of the cell. So it is designed in such a way that, the, again, as I mentioned, the hydrophilic heads are oriented towards the aqueous environments on the outside, out, and inside the cell, right? Hydrophobic tails, oh, that looks like a W, that's an N, in. Uh, the hydrophobic tails are facing inwards away from these aqueous environments, and what this does is it allows the cell to be able to um, regulate what comes in and out, right? Because it has to pass through this 
hydrophobic environment in order to get into the cell freely. If not, it's going to need one of these weird membrane things uh, that we see, membrane proteins that we see around here. We'll get into it. So fluid mosaic model, a model to describe the structure of cell membranes. The fluid part of this is that there's this weak hydrophobic interactions, right? These things, these, these phospholipids aren't really bound together necessarily. They're kind of just held together by these weak bonds, right? Just the fact that there's water outside and inside the cell kind of makes it form into this weird shape anyway. So that allows it to kind of be fluid, right? Like they're not attached to each other, so it can kind of move and shift. Uh, temperature definitely affects fluidity, right? So increased temperature makes it more fluid. Decreased temperature makes it more rigid. Unsaturated hydrocarbon tails help maintain this fluidity. So that's these unsaturated tails over here and you can see this little kink in them right so you can imagine as the temperature starts going down these molecules stop start losing that um, kinetic energy uh, these little kinks in the tails allow it to maintain that fluid environment um, there you go the kink tails prevent tight packing of the phospholipids so again you can see that down over here there's a little bit of space in between uh, that allows it to kind of maintain that fluid environment. Boom, right there. The uh, cholesterol here too. So cholesterol is really important in this model. You can see this is the cholesterol right down over here. And this helps maintain fluidity at high and at low temperatures. So, um, you know, it's a fat that's inside of our membranes um, that resist these high temp. So high temperature would reduce the movement right? It kind of absorbs it a bit. And at low temperature, it reduces tight packing of phospholipids. So this is genuinely a type of lipid is cholesterol. Um, you may have heard it in a, a negative sense in terms of you have high cholesterol or low cholesterol in your blood. Some of us may have a family member with high cholesterol. You all have a science teacher right here with high cholesterol. Cholesterol is actually incredibly important in this fluid mosaic model. Uh, the mosaic just means it's comprised of many things. It's not just one thing. We have the phospholipids and the carbohydrates and the proteins and the glycoproteins and all these different things, right? It's a mosaic. Like, um, you know how people make those mosaics? They smash the plates and stuff and then make it into like a pretty picture. And when you see it, it's all together. Same thing with the plasma membrane. Boom, cholesterol. Boom, many things. Okay, let's talk about one of those things, membrane proteins. There are two major categories of proteins within the membrane. One is integral proteins. These are proteins embedded into the, lip, into the lipid bilayer. So you can see here, integral, okay? It goes all the way through. Integral as a word means you're like centrally part of right? If, if I say to you, you listening to this right now, you are an integral part of this class. That means that you are in it. Everyone's surrounding you. You are important in it. You maintain structure. You do an important job. So integral proteins go all the way through the membrane. They are hugged by the phospholipid bilayer on either side. We also call these transmembrane proteins because again, they go from one side of the membrane to the other. You can see some of them have these channels that go through them, right? These are membrane channels, allowing different molecules to come in and out of the membrane. Some of them are solid, right? And have these weird things kind of attached to them. These are more signaling molecules, right? So something will, instead of coming straight through, it'll bind to this, and then something will happen down here to like pass the message on. These are also amphiphatic, right? So they have to be able to exist through the plasma membrane, which means it has to be both hydrophilic and hydrophobic, right? Um, lastly, we have, or I shouldn't say lastly, there's only two major ones, integral and peripheral. 
So if I asked you to look around the periphery of the room, that means you'd probably look around the edge of the room, look around the walls, that sort of thing. Peripheral proteins hang out on the outside. So they don't go all the way through. They kind of just hang out on one side or the other side. So you can see a few different uh, views of that here. Integral proteins go all the way through. Integral proteins are down over here. Channel proteins is sometimes what we call integral proteins with these channels in it, right? And then peripheral proteins, they hang out on the outside. They're not embedded into the layer. They just kind of hang out there on the sides. They're on the periphery, they're hanging out. They're like wallflowers. Uh, they're loosely bonded to the surface. That's about it. All right, so let's talk carbs. <clears throat> Membrane carbohydrates are important for cell-to-cell -cell recognition. Now, when we start getting into unit three, four, uh, we'll start talking about cell-to-cell -cell communication. This is essentially how cells recognize each other. So the first is glycolipids. This is easy to remember because they're bonded to lipids. They're carbohydrates that are bonded to the lipids in the lipid bilayer. So this is your glycolipid. Then you have glycoproteins. Guess what those are attached to? You're right, proteins. These are the carbohydrates that are bonded to, pro to proteins, either integral proteins like this or peripheral proteins that hang out on the outside. So glycolipids, are things that are hanging on to the lipids. Glycoproteins hang on to the proteins. This is important for cells to be able to send signals and recognize each other. Glycoproteins are most abundant. That's about it. Great, so all up until this point, that was animal cells. Let's talk some differences in plant cells. Plants have a cell wall that cover their plasma membranes, okay? This is in addition to the plasma membrane. Plants have a cell wall in addition to the plasma membrane, not in replacement of. So this is an extracellular function uh, structure, obviously not found in plants. It provides shape and structure. It provides protection. It regulates water intake in and out. Um, but really, this is a common misconception. We have a cell wall that is made of various substances. Then inside that cell wall, there is a cell membrane. Okay, cell wall and cell membrane. The cell wall is composed of cellulose, thicker. It's thicker than plasma membranes. It's how plants can stay up straight. They contain these things called plasmodesmata. This is like one of my favorite science words, plasmo desmata. So plasmo, plasma, think of it that way. Plasmo desmata are these hole-like structures in the cell wall filled with cytosol and, con and uh, connect adjacent cells. So you'll have a cell wall and it'll have a little bit of a gap in it like this. You'll have a membrane around it. Oh, I'm sorry, inside. I'll draw a little nucleus, why not? And then right next to it, you'll have another one. They kind of stack on top of each other like this. This is the plasmodesmata. It's a hole that connects adjacent cells through the cell wall. Okay, plasmodesmata, say it with me now. Plasmodesmata, hole-like structures in the cell wall filled with cytosol. That, con that connects adjacent cells in plants. Great, this is a free response question I want you to take a shot at. We are going to start hammering out free response questions soon. Um, don't, the college board likes to throw you off with crazy words like this. You can just call it the sea fish. So let's take a shot at this. The sea fish, also known as the crocodile ice fish, lives in the southern ocean around Antarctica. These waters are known to maintain extremely low temperatures all year, ranging from approximately 28 degrees Fahrenheit to 35 degrees Fahrenheit. 
These fish have adaptations that allow them to live in cold, low oxygen waters. Great. A, if you were to examine the membrane lipid composition of the cells from the sea fish, identify what you would expect to find. Justify why you might find what you identified in part A. So take a shot at it. Think of membrane lipid composition that we just spoke of, living in low temperatures all year. What would we expect to see? I can't wait to see the answers. And um, 15 minutes. That's great. Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming. I'll see you in class.